All right, so the FPV Out Club released its software a little bit ago. Well, the project's matured since then, so let's take a look at it, talk about the various software packages, look at a little of the end-to-end -end latency, and show you how on OBS you can compensate for the latency adjustment for the audio portion. So if you do a live stream event or anything of that nature, you can sync them both up to have a consistent audio with the delayed video. So if you're not aware, the FPV Out project is an open source project to get FPV signal out of the DJI goggles and you can put it on to either computer screen or they have an Android app. So the first thing you want to do if you want to use FPV Out is go to the website fpvout.com and then go up to the wiki right here. From here you can see the different methods that you can utilize. You can see requirements, so on and so forth. You can browse down here to device specific setup and usage guides. Here you can see desktop, Android, uh, cell phone, computer, or the web. So the most things that are people are going to use is either desktop or Android. And honestly, if you just want to use it for your desktop, the easiest thing you can do is just go to live.fpvout.com. Let me show you here what I'm talking about. So with Google Chrome, and it has to be Google Chrome just because of the USB interface thing, you go to live.fpvout.com, and then you would plug in your goggles. Once your goggles are plugged in, and you have a quad plugged in, you're gonna go ahead and hit connect. You should see your Android device right here. Just go ahead and kick connect on that. With your quad powered up, you should see the image come up. It's pretty straightforward. You can maximize it here and you're off to the races. And one thing to keep in mind with that web app, obviously it's, it's a web app, but you can use it while offline. So you could visit the website, then you know, close your laptop lid or whatever, disconnect from the internet, take it out to the field, open your laptop lid, and it would still operate uh, using that link. It doesn't need a live internet connection to run. However, do keep in mind, if you would clean your cache, not be on the internet, go back to that website, it wouldn't come up, it wouldn't be cached anymore. So yeah, you gotta watch out for that. I mean, I'm assuming you could tether to your phone real quick, go to the website. Like I said, it's not transferring data in any large meaningful way across your internet connection while it's operating. The other option is you can go to desktop here and then download this zip file. Once unzipped, it will have uh, three exe files and it will have an installer. So once you have it all unzipped, the first thing you'll need to do is go to install driver, have your goggles plugged in. So you plug those in with the USB-C, bring up the Zadag app. And if you don't see bulk interface device here, just go up to list all devices and then look down through here, you're gonna see this bulk interface device right here. And then you're going to go ahead and hit install driver. Mine says reinstall driver since I've done this already, but again, bulk interface device, and then hit install driver here. And once that driver's installed, you should start to see that when you plug in your goggles, you start to actually get an interface here where you can actually access the USB card uh, directly across um, the USB cable when the goggles are installed at, from that point forward. Once that is done, it's as simple as you run either three of these batch files here. Uh, there is a run VNC and then a low latency, and there is also a hybrid if you have a separate graphics card on your computer or on your laptop or whatnot, uh, where you can run on one graphics card or the other. Run VOC and run VOC hybrid are the most stable. The low latency one is quite a bit less latency, uh, so we'll just click on that for now. That will open up a command window. And with your machine turned on, you will get a signal right here. And you can see that. Now for the final method, we're gonna need a USB to USB-C cable. This will need to have an OTG adapter. This OTD adapter over the air adapter, you can get, you can get them, pick them up pretty cheap. That would need to plug in to your Android phone. It can't be an iPhone, it has to be an Android phone. And you would plug the OTG into this. Uh, the same setup as well, you can use uh, with the Betaflight configurator app, so it's kind of handy to have. And then on this end, another quick tip is just to have one that's a little adapter here that can take it from micro USB to USB-C, so then you can flip this on and off if you have different flight controllers, and or, of course, just to plug in your DJI here as well. So this one is very straightforward. You just want to go to the Play Store and download this DigiView app. You can see it right here. And once you have your quad powered up, your goggles power it up and just plug your USB cable into your goggles and plug it into your Android phone. It should automatically boot the app 
and then take you right in and have the video playing as well. And you can see here, I have that video on and we're set and ready to go. In the app, there's different modes. So I can hit my settings here. And then in here, you can see I'm on latency mode, but there's a default conservative, aggressive latency and latency buffered. We're gonna talk about the different latencies um, associated with those, also with the website, and then also with the downloaded uh, bat file process as well. So I will roll the testing here in just a second, but to make you not have to sit through all that. So for the website, we're getting about one second and 19 milliseconds, five seconds and 15 milliseconds for the run VOC and the downloaded version. You can see the run VOC low latency, it's pretty competitive with the 25 milliseconds. That's, that's pretty good. And then the Android app, the latency um, version or mode is really quick at the five milliseconds delay. So there's really hardly any delay. You'll see if you do stick around to watch this, the tests, you'll see that it kind of hung up on my phone at least. And my phone's an, an Android Samsung S7, so it's a little old, but um, you know maybe you have better results with that. So I kind of would personally, because with my phone, it seems like it stick to the aggressive would be as good as I can get that. And finally, if you're using OBS, what you can do with your mic source, if you are doing a live stream kind of scenario uh, with a computer in the field or back from your house or something like that, uh, you, can, you can see my mic source right here. Once you have your mic set up, which uh, might be an internal or external, you can actually come down here and hit on properties of that. It's actually advanced audio properties. You can actually build in a delay for that source. So you can delay your mic uh, so that it would align with the recording of the video. So you would have the OBS recording the screen on your computer and then also the audio and then you can delay the audio to sync up with that. Keep in mind that one second is a thousand milliseconds. So for some of those it was one second and 15 milliseconds. So it would be 1015 would be what you'd put in here. So an example for one second and 15 milliseconds would be 10. 15 milliseconds right here to line that up. And I would do some test runs as well to see that things are kind of lining up for you. And the delay may vary a little bit back and forth, but you can see those are generally the averages to, on the delays that you get there. Okay, well, that is it. Hopefully that gives you a good rundown of the FPAV out and the three different ways you can access it and the delays associated with some of those different settings and how you can kind of compensate that for that with OBS. If you are really digging what these guys are doing, do check out their donation page. And click on it right there from the wiki and then they have a donation set up where you can do a single time donation or a monthly contribution they're continuing to work on this process you can see where those funds are going to where the contributors are so do check that out show these guys some love as always thanks everybody and i hope this helped okay so this is the test with the live fpv out Go to the run VOC. Wow. VOC. A lot of delay. VOC hybrid. Okay, that off, and this is the VOC low latency. forward okay so this is the app and we're going to do the first test here which is on default go okay let's change the settings let's go to conservative Okay, 
let's change the settings again. Now we're going to go to aggressive. Mm, let's see here it locked up. Oh, there it goes. Latency buffer. Yeah, the latency's there again. 